Welcome everyone to tonight's episode of Profound States. Tonight we have a very special guest, Veronica Bartolini. Uh, she was in the Secret Space Programs, also known as, also known as SSP, uh, which included uh, the Montauk, Monarch, Project Saturn, Project Mannequin, um, which was CI Assassins and the Beta Project and the Sex Kitten Project. Alter Lisa Monroe. Uh, she was uh, also in projects Kruger, Nachtwaffen, Shaw House, Crystal Gates, uh, also called Clone Mira, working with uh, Super Dolphins, Soldiers, and the Regrowth Project and Protected Portals. Veronica was also in Project Stargate One, known as the Monroe Project and Project Pegasus. She was also a part of Umbrella Corporation's Hulk program, which started at Black Shield, known as the Blue Ranger. The Blue Ranger was intended, intended and designed as a cowboy prototype super soldier, but there was an explosion. Subsequent muta mutations occurred. The result of the explosion was the Incredible Hulk. The project was then replicated on other super soldiers, including James Ring's clone. Rob Richter and Veronica's clone named Sheila the She-Hulk. Um, I don't necessarily want to read all of her bio because <laughs> too it's long. too long. So I'm going to let, let that go and just welcome her. Welcome to tonight's show, Veronica. Thank uh, you, Mr. Beaver. It sounds like you've been used and abused quite a bit. Yeah, but no more. <laughs> no more. All right. So um, why don't we start from the beginning? Some, you know, it, on some shows, they get into indies and they start right on the indie. And to me, the beginning is when you were born. So the beginning in this case would be the first memory you have of anything odd in your lifetime. So why don't you look back in your life and your memory and think about anything that's been ha that's happened to you that's strange of any kind. Doesn't matter what kind of event it is. If it was a strange event and you find it interesting to speak about, start there. Strange um, is that I, I have memories of being three years old. I have memories of being in my mother's womb as well but she had a c-section so i know i was part of the abandonment uh what do they call it the um, surrogate abandonment project so my family is not really my family i don't really belong here on earth i'm i came in as a shooting star that's what i remember um somehow i got captured here they switched, I'm pretty sure they switched me uh, when I was, you know, a child. Of course, I do have some of my father's DNA and my mother's DNA, but um, I'm pretty well, much from here. So hold on, hold on for a second. Okay, back up. You say you were a shooting star. What do you remember about being a shooting star? I could go anywhere, be anywhere. Um, I don't know how well, so I got captured. You're, you're saying you have pre-birth memories. Yeah, so pre-birth memories, um, it was pretty, like, in the third trimester. That's when they probably put me in there. Um, and I remember going through the, the light tunnel. I do remember being in a lab um, many times as, as, a, as a baby, we can say. At a year and a half, um, I have memories of being... Under, under the water, the dolphin program. That was a year and eight months when they took me, according to Peter, the insider ACIO. I have memories of when I was three years old, uh, swimming without having to breathe underwater. Um, I would wake up and I would be the first one to wake up in the household at three years old, just watching the uh, TV and it would be with the snow uh, on the screen. And that's pretty much how I would be taken to these programs. But um, I do remember being on spaceships. 
um, with Andromedan family um, being tested with, uh, you know, cubes and things like that, going through portals, going through wormholes. I have memories of that. So uh, then my mother put me in Head Start when I was in three years old. And then they would take us to these field trips. I remember being and by the by the lake we had to i know my father helped me to make this little wooden little car uh or boat and they had us do kinds of weird things like hold hands with the kids uh, the many buses that we had to go to uh we even when i moved to um tucson because i was born in nogales sonora mexico so when i was a year old we went to live my family and i they took me to Nogales, Arizona. I lived right in front of Lincoln Elementary School, which I thought was kind of weird. It was a very small house. And to my left was the playground. I remember being alone a lot, most of the time as a child, playing by myself. And I do remember where the neighbor, we had a neighbor that had a pool. So I would sneak out, like everybody was asleep and this was, again, at three years old, three to four, and I'd go to the neighbors, and then I don't remember what happened. All I remember was waking up when my mom was swatting me on my butt because she's like, you're not allowed to go to the neighbors. You're not allowed to leave without permission. So I have a lot of lost time there. Um, so I was taken a lot. Um, I was in You're ESL. A lot. You, you were taken a lot. Of like field trips, uh, taken, meaning missing time. Um, I know I've been I, on the moon and Mars, Uranus, I remember that, uh, when Venus. You, when, you, when you say you were taken a lot, who took you, aliens or humans? I'm pretty sure it was the government, <laughs> the alphabet soups. You okay, know? so what, what's the earliest memory do you, what's the earliest memory in this life where you feel like the government took you? What were you, how old were you and what, how did it happen? What I remember is three years old. What happened? There was a man waiting for me outside and he's like, give me your hand. We're going to go somewhere. It was this man. And the next thing I know, I'm on a ship and there was these, I don't, I think they're in drama day and I'm not sure, but they had these black eyes that are, um, how do you say oval sideways? They have hair, but it's like stuck on their um, head. Um, one of them was in a purple suit, the other one in a blue, the other one yellow. There was one female, she was really tall. So it could have been, you know, the, we'll say the MIB or the, the government pretty much dressing up like aliens because we were children. Um, I really, I know there are aliens, but at the same time, I, I know that most of the time I call them the people that are above the dome because we're in a dome on Earth. We have a dome above and below. Some people call it the veil. I call it the glass dome. You'll see it through the suns. A lot of people say we have two suns. and The rainbows are not rainbows. They're just, you know, the, when you look at the, the sun and there's these arcs, right? Because they have two two mirrors on earth. So when I say the people above the dome, it's pretty much how it's humans, but with technology. We've come way before Atlantis. I have memories of being in Atlantis. I have memories of being in Egypt. We just are now in this stage. And so you're, so you're saying that you blur other lifetimes, that you, you remember your other lifetimes. And so, uh, okay, so when you were three years old, a man came and took you somewhere on a ship. Yes, it was in, uh, it looked like the bell, like the, the German uh, bell spaceship. And it was like a lavender, kind of like a silver and lavender, very shiny, um, sleek ship. And later on, um, I was sick all the time. They, my mom took me to the dentist. Um, all of a sudden, I had seven cavities where I was like, how am I going to have seven cavities? My mom and my father were very strict on us brushing our teeth and, you know, doing the whole hygiene thing. And, well, I have implants. 
And um, recently I have had my 23rd surgery. I'm about to have my 24th surgery. Since I was 18, I've had surgeries and they pretty much messed up my body with um, implants. Uh, when I was in the military as well, they shot me up with the anthrax shot. I've had two spinal surgeries. I have titanium in there, my feet. I've had so many surgeries. Um, so when did you have your first dental surger surgery ever? I was about eight years old, I think, seven to eight years old when my mother took us to, my sisters and I, to the doc, to the dentist. And about seven to eight years old, I remember it was going to be my eighth birthday when we moved here. That's when we started going to this place called El Rio uh, Health. Like, my mom would always take us there. They were always taking blood for me. I was always sick. My mom had to shoot me with, shoot me up. What I say shoot me up is give me penicillin shots, which I hated. Um, I had a lot I had, of the, I had those too. Yeah, it's horrible. The glass ones. <laughs> well, the, okay, so uh, I ha was, my body is a little different. I mean, I, I was born with a large heart, a hole in my heart a heart murmur, all these different issues. And uh, I never had all the childhood diseases that people have, that what they get from going to the, uh, hanging out at the, uh, you know, where parents drop their kids off at the daycare and you get it from all the other kids. Well, I never had to go through, I never had to stay at a daycare when I was a kid. I stayed across the street with a old older lady that, so I never caught any diseases from other kids because I never had to interact with them as a kid. And so I didn't get any of that, but I did have diseases I was born with, like the ones I just mentioned, large heart, hole in my heart, uh, heart murmur, et cetera, et cetera. And so uh, they wanted to give me a, a very, very painful penicillin shot every month of my life or make me take uh, penicillin pills constantly every single day, a bunch of them. And so it was one or the other. And so I preferred to have a nasty shot once a month and have to take all those pills. So I know what you, how you hey. feel about that. Sorry, it makes me wonder what they did to you. <laughs> well. Maybe you were using the programs too. <laughs> um, I have a background that's I, I don't know that I was used in any of the programs like you're talking about but but I do have a you know you can go listen to I've done 34 interviews so I've had a lot of experience but it's just in a different area you and I are like from different worlds my world is paranormal and alien and a, with a minor in aliens not not like I went and hung out with the aliens once a day or once a month or once a year, uh, but I've had some alien encounters, but on rare, on very rare occasion. But your video is frozen, so oh. this connection is really terrible. Aye, so aye. All we've got is audio, but that's okay. Uh, we'll just go with what we've got. Okay. So, um, so you had a guy take you to a ship who was human and you were three years old, correct? Yes, and they had us play with this thing, like it kind of looked like a cube, like a Rubik's cube. And uh, there was other children there in like a round table and they were just telling us, hey, put this together, put it apart. We want to, pretty much they want to see what we can do. And when I started to do it, you know, trying to figure out with my hand, the lady telepathically told me, do it with your mind. You know, they look like, they look like freaking aliens, okay? These people, in my mind, they're aliens, but I mean, they well, could have been, the, you know. If you're talking about MIBs, okay, the, there are many different stories about MIBs, and some of them, um, most of them, they look like humans, but they're not humans, they just look like humans. Like humanoids? Yeah, well, they no, they look like totally like humans, except like their skin color might be off or 
and they don't really know what it means to be a human, and but they look like a human, mm -hmm. except for their maybe their skin color is different, and they don't they don't know what a pencil is. That, you know, really simple human stuff they don't understand. Things like that. Now I'm not an expert on MIBs, but I've just heard stories. I've never encountered one myself. I've encountered craft. I've encountered aliens. I've not encountered MIBs. So uh, the people on the craft, the guy that went to grab you when you were three, took you on the craft. Describe those uh, humans or whatever, whatever you think they were, regardless of what you think they were. Describe them again. I think they were Andromedans. Um... Because well, I was, um, they, like I said, one of them had, was in, the female was in a, like a purple lavender suit. She was really tall. She was maybe about six, 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 five. Um, she had kind of curly brownish hair, but it was like stuck to her, to her scalp. Um, so it wasn't real. It, to me, I, in my mind, I'm like, what are these things, you know, are these are these, to me, as a child, they were aliens. Well, uh, you know, that, that's fine if that's, it, whatever your impressions are, to me, that's that's totally valid. You don't have to explain No, no, I know. It's, it's just a lot of, what it is, is because where we live, where we live, there is a lot of talk about the UFO invasion and all that stuff, and a lot of the, the times, it's the alphabet soups that pretty much use the technology and will pretend that pretend they're to aliens. be aliens. Right, but okay. I have seen in my mind, uh, in my mind's eye, before I go to sleep, sometimes I'll see this reptilian being, and um, he has like very shimmery. He has scales like a dinosaur, and he's uh, like a rainbow kind of a colored. Um, kind of looks like a dragon because I have a lot of memories of being in, in a dragon land and my grandfather was there. We were the gold dragons in one of my lifetimes. So, uh, but this particular one looks like a, a kind of like a reptilian, uh, like a dragon. Um, when I first had my awakening, I saw all kinds of black um, kind of dragon beings. I had to sleep with my light on for about a month or two. They were everywhere. I saw them in the ships. I can still see the ships when they're outside. They're not clouds. Those are ships. Those are cities that are right above us. Okay. They're there. There's traffic at night. There's traffic during the day. At night, you can see the grid more. We're, we're not alone because we're, we're with the others. You know, we're with some of them chose to be in the planets above us or the dome above us or somebody or some of us are here you know on earth and when i get the the ringing in my ear sometimes i'm like okay are they like beaming me up scotty because i'll be washing the dishes or you know reading or driving and it'll be the the tones and i'm like no i'm not going to go to your spaceship no i'm not going to go to be used again um, so you you get a ring in ears before you're taken onto ships yes and I do not consent. You know, another thing that it could be is uh, in, in Project um, Ibis and Project Mannequin is uh, they they want to do the, what they call the Manchurian candidate. They, they'll sometimes send those things to your ear or, or if you're on the phone and somebody calls you, like if I have a, a phone that I hook in, but for a month now I, I don't hook it in anymore because they'll call me with tones. And I'm like, no, I'm, I do not consent. Like a fax, you know, machine tone. And uh, some of them... Some of the time, what they want, which is the DOD, the, they is the DOD, okay, Department of Defense, uh, along with Project Umbrella and all the other black ops that you want, DARPA, et cetera, et cetera, all the alphabet suits. They get together, they have little groups to monitor you. So they're like, okay, today we want Veronica to be an assassin for us in this, you know, because we need her to kill off this person or whatever. Or we need her to be the sex kitten because we need information from this guy. I I do not consent to that anymore. I'm not dating anymore. There's a lot of times where they would send the CIA, what I call the CIA love bite. Okay, it could be friends. It could be guys to, you know, for you to go and have relations with. Um, they just want information. Okay, they'll tug at your heart. They're like, oh, this person needs help. Let's go help that person. But they end up, they end up using you. 
So there's a movie called Manchurian Candidate. I recommend people to see that. That's to get an idea of how they kind of like morph you by the tone into being another alter because we all have alters. Sometimes they're called uh, prone to support personalities. Um, lately, they call it disassociative identity disorder because. You know, so how problems. many how many personalities do you have? That I know of, I have about 28 right now that I've written down. So one but, of the people I interviewed recently, she I think she said something about 128 or so, some some huge number. It was very it, large. Yeah, it's 13 by 13 by 13 by 13. <laughs> it's the cube, okay? They put you in a cube, and whatever the dimensions are of the cube, 13 by however many sides are in a cube, that's how many personalities that they can build in one person. I'm pretty sure I have more than 28. I am sure. That's why I don't drink anymore. I don't smoke anymore. Uh, even or, I quit organic cigarettes. That's what I was smoking um, because of my divorce. It was really hard. Um, I don't... Because, you know, anytime you drink or you're under whatever kind of um, thing that is outside of your body, it just makes it easier for them to use you, you know, and it's like, no, I, I, I've isolated myself. And that's another program program that they have, which is Project Artichoke. They want you to be alone. Well, I'd rather be here alone than over there doing their dirty work or, you know, when I fall asleep, I have chronic PTSD. I recommend this book. It's called um, Healing from PTSD. Oh, I thought I had it here. Hold on a moment. Uh, Time to Heal by Catherine, Kathy O'Brien. PTSD. I recently started wearing a watch. I never wanted to wear a watch because I was done. I was in the military and I was police and I was always looking at my watch. But now I know why. We have to get a watch, guys, because we have lost time. And we want to know where we are. Well, when Kathy, I, Kathy uh, O'Brien, Kathy O'Brien was uh, yeah. a mind control uh, yeah. slave. MPL. Yep, that's what we were. Some of us were that. She has. Uh, there's a book called Transformations. Is that her book? This one's called PTSD: Time to Heal. But I'm sure she has others. Yeah, I just know she's associated with something about trans. Transform uh, um, uh, trans America. I, I don't remember the title, but I just remember a book that, that she was associated with. I don't know if it was a book about her or by her. I also have memories. I know she talks about how she was using the government, but I have memories of being with Hillary Clinton in Mexico in my parent in my grandmother's house, and there was two men in black there what they call two men in black with her doing some very ugly sexual things to me which i'm not going to get into um well, i don't expect you to yeah here it is it go says, back uh, through traumatic events it's not the point. yeah here is um ptsd time to heal and then she says there's a website called www.trans t-r-a-n-c-e in big capital letters and then tag or dash formations.com and then she has www.forreasonsofnationalsecurity.com and www.ptsdtimetoheal.com. Those are the three that she put here. Yeah, but so, this book has been helping me, but it does trigger me, so I had to stop. I think I read like maybe 10 pages, and I'm like, okay, I got to stop. <laughs> it's so a lot. it does trigger you? Yeah, it's. I'm still healing. I just broke away from... Um, the super soldier groups on Facebook a good two years ago. Um, there's a lot of sex, what I call sex kitten ring going on there. Um, I won't really get into it too much, but there was a, a guy there who said, oh, we're twin flames. And uh, guess what? I'm going to leave my wife and marry you. And I ended up in Kingsman, Arizona and in Needles, California, because supposedly we're looking for a house. And I told my kids I'm leaving. I'm going to move and I'm going to get married. Yeah, right. This this stuff is horrific what they do in those programs. It still exists. It still exists. Um, they have double lives. You know, I can go on and on. <laughs> so um, your mind control, uh, you have a mind control pass, you have passed, you have a super soldier passed. Um, and you were taken by 
somebody at the age of three who was either aliens or pretending to be aliens. Right. And is then that, uh, that? after, do you want me to go like after that? Or I mean, we were on the we were on the ship and they wanted us to um, come up with these, you know, fix these puzzles uh, in a cube form. And then when I tried, like I said, when I tried to do it with my hands, the female person or alien, whatever you want to call it, she said, hey, do it with your mind. So then I lifted the cube with my mind. I was able, I'm also able to levitate. Um, when I was a child, I was a sonambulism, sonambula. So it was sonambulism. My dad had it too, I had it too. You were and, somnambulistic. Yes, and so there is a, a time I was, uh, let's see, how old was I? This, I was six years old and um, I, I see myself getting up, putting my backpack on, and then I see myself on top of myself going and walking toward the door. And my mom says, no, it's Saturday. You get to stay home in Spanish, right? And then um, years later, I tell my mom, hey, mom, um, was it a dream? Or I saw myself, you know, I was in my yellow suits because we had little yellow suits where they cover your feet and your hands when you sleep. Um, and I would put on the backpack and she said, yes, you were it's real you were trying to go to school so i was being mind controlled to go to school but maybe they got it wrong my mother was up you know she had to be up by five because she had to make lunch for my dad so and breakfast so it's really interesting in hindsight the things that they try and do and so they they were gonna uh take you uh while your parents weren't watching if you mm -hmm. made it out of the house yes sir Okay, so um, go to your next event that you remember that was odd. Just keep going through them. Don't wait for me to uh, to tell. Just take one odd event after the other, and don't gloss past any odd events unless it's something that's extremely traumatic. You can. There's no reason for you to relive those. But um, there's short one, of that, there's, yeah, there's a, a few that I I still think about. Like, what the heck was it? You know. Um, I had my awakening in 2017, what they call awakening. Um, I started listening to Max Spears. He's one of my brothers, the super soldier. He was killed off, unfortunately. And um, I started hearing his, you know, I started crying when I found out he was dead. I'm like, why am I crying? Why? So memories started popping up and popping up. And I said, you know, because I did have a near-death experience in, um, Halloween of 2010, um, my my ex-husband, it was between my ex-husband and I, I don't remember uh, grabbing my um, weapon. To make a long story short, I was in the hospital for a month and a half. I died for three days. Okay? We're not going to get into that yet. But if you want to do another interview, that's fine, or I can tell you. So you. Go, go through the uh, time, your near-death experience, the part where you were on the other side. I don't, you know, I don't care about you're, you're, right. I don't care about your conflict with your husband. What I want right. to hear is when you were out of your body, that part. So what I remember is I remember waking up and I was on a table and there was a, many doctors around me. There was about 20. Later on, I was confirmed that 20 doctors helped to save me. 20 doctors and a light. And then um, they put a plastic thing on my left um the side of my left breast because they had said that the lung had collapsed later on they said that well i remember screaming i they didn't give me any anesthesia and then they put a black um like black velvet thing over my mouth and the next thing that i remember i get up from the bed and i'm in my nightgown from the you know the the gown that they give you at the at the hospital and i look around and there's these dark beings they're like charcoal blue and uh like black and they're cut in half and they're like looking at me like this they're hanging out on top of the machine that was you know like in other words i i went in code blue i flatlined i died for three days my mom called everybody she's dying i saw these beings and they were on the floor and i was trying to like not step on them I kept walking and I saw a light around the door so never go to the light <laughs> I always tell people don't go to the light you're gonna come right back so 
I went, I opened the door and I was trying to look for a doctor or a nurse because I'm like, what am I doing here in the hospital? So when I opened the door, I'm back in my room again, same nightgown, but the beings were gone. They had, you know, the beings, by the way, had like the yellow eyes and black jagged haircut, all the same short haircut. And um, when I came, when I opened the door, they were gone, but my dad was in that corner. He was right in the corner of my room. And he unfortunately took his life when I was 13. So he was there and I cried to him in Spanish. I said, please, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. I want to stay here with you. And he says, no, me, he gave me a hug. And he says, you can't go back. You, you can't stay with me. You have your two kids. You're not done. You gotta go back. How, gotta how go old? Back. How old were you when this happened? This was in December. I'm sorry, Halloween of 2010. So, what are we in? 20, 23 now, almost. Oh, let me do the calculator thing. 13 years ago. I mean, how old were you at the time? Well, I'm not really good with math, so I can do quantum physics, but so I suck at math. 39. You were 39. Yeah. Okay, so at the age of 39, you died. You're on the other side. Your dad is there. You want to stay with him. Go from there. But he doesn't let me. I cry and cry. I keep crying, nothing, holding on to him as tight as I can. The next thing I know, I take a deep breath. I'm back in my body. I'm like, what the, you know, I'm taking everything out. Why am I being held down? There was tubes in my nose, tubes in my throat. So you weren't on the other side very long. I was there for three days. On the other side? Yes. So what, what happened besides you hugged your dad in the corner of the room? What else happened for three days? Well, I saw those beings. I don't know if I was fighting them off with my sword or... Describe, describe the beings. They look like the uh, Hindu blue beings that they try and fight for your soul. You're talking yeah. about the uh, the blue uh, uh, gods of India? Yes. They're just like humans, but they're blue. Yep. So a bunch of them, they had the black hair. Um, I do have a book. I don't have it with me right now. It's in the storage, but um, it's interesting. A few years ago, I bought some Hindu books. They were like a huge stack for like $100. <laughs> and I started reading them. And in one of them, they have those gods there fighting for a human. For The, hum the, the picture is a, a guy that's dying. His spirit's coming out and they're fighting for his soul, either to take it away from him or to, I don't know why they're fighting. I haven't read it yet, but that's exactly those beings that were in uh, the other side. So I don't know so if I killed what, them all. What, 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 when you take yourself back for a moment, when you're in their presence, what, did you, what impression did you get from them? I didn't like them. I felt they were taking my soul. So I think I got you rid of them. You thought they were evil. Okay. So go on. Like what else happened during your three days? while you're out well i was driving in my patrol car yeah, while you're they on the other side on the other side i was in my patrol car but it kind of felt like a spaceship but it was my patrol car and and they wanted me to end my ex's life because they wanted they wanted him and me to go and and uh, do a battle he was in his truck and he had a bunch of police officers with him and I, I was in my vehicle alone, and they wanted us to go crash head on, which I, I didn't. In, in, in when, when I was about to crash into, and I said, no, I'm not that type of person. And then that's when I went into the other room, where I woke up, and then, you know, the other things happened. That, those are the two events that I remember that happened when I was out. And but, but you don't remember much about three days. No, and to, and and now you know when I remote view myself back, and it makes sense that those that I would have most likely probably got rid of them with my sword, cut them in half because I'm not letting anybody take my soul. I'm not letting anybody take me to the moon. I'm not letting them take my memories. I'm not letting them send me back to Saturn to reincarnate me. I am not coming back, and they want my soul. 
and I'm not letting them have it. So they try with the CIA love fight. And so go, go be, uh, you're 34, you had a near-death experience. Go to your next, inter your next interesting experience after your near-death experience. So then I started listening to the Max Gears and started getting all my memories back, and well, most of them. And oh, I stop, stop, stop. So yes. what, what, um, you're listening to Max Spears, but what, um, what was happening in your life that caused you to get your memories back? What was the impede? What was the wow. stimulus that caused your memories to return? A lot, a lot. I had gotten a divorce. I. So you're saying you were under stress? I was under stress, yeah. And I had to live with a, a friend who was a psychic, and she said, you know, we would we would do psychic things together. She was teaching me how to get stronger, and I got stronger and stronger. And then one day, I'm like, what the heck am I doing here on Earth? Like, you know, after listening to Max Spears, I'm like, is this crap real? Why am I still here on Earth? If there is really a God, which is not the God here, the, the Bible that they talk about, something beyond I said, if there's really something beyond that gives a crap about me in other words of course i need to know and i had a rosary on my left hand and you know i was burning a candle and i had my prayer beads on on my right and and i fell to my knees when this light came out of my chest this really happened came out of my chest i went to my knees and at the same time i heard a snap outside I went shooting like something had burnt outside like something just came down crashed and my roommates i was like did you guys hear that did you guys see the light they're like yes and then we went outside and there was these other neighbors oh hold on. back and up said, what the you're, hell was that <laughs> back up back up for a second okay yeah. your your connection I, my connection to you really got bad as you were telling that story so tell it tell it again they don't want me talking, but I don't care. I will continue. So I was asking something out there. I said, if there's something you know that's out there that really loves me, like further than yeah. the gods yeah. of this earth, right. you know, right, right, right. Know. I got that so part. The light went out. The light went out. Came out. Sorry, that the, there was a light that came out of my chest. I went to my knees, and at the same time that the light came out, there was like a shooting star or something, like a fuego, fire, boom, and it just went. Bah. And we were like, what the hell just happened? Like a flare came down and it made this huge noise. And I thought, oh, shoot, maybe an asteroid. I don't know but what happened. So we go out. My roommates and I go out. My neighbors are like, what the heck was that? We're like, did you see that? Did you hear that? Yes. But there was nothing there. Nothing on the ground. So the light came out of you. What happened to the light after it came out of you? It just, we were amazed, like, what happened? We were, like, wondering what the hell just happened. And my, but did, my, but did, the, but did the light, was the light there in front of you after it came out of you, or what? What happened to the light? The light was here, and then I heard that, and there was light outside, and we went outside. Well, I don't know where the light went. It's in me, obviously, right? So what did it look like when it came out of you? Just white, white fire, like white fire. But, I mean, okay, so did it... Did it flow out of you? Did it come out of you in the form of a ball? What was the what like a ball. shape was it in? It was a ball. It was a, it was like a ball, but it had like these um like a plasma around it that was white, like fire, I guess you could say. How big was it? It was pretty big. It was, it was big. And what do you think? Looking back. What do you think it was? I think it's me coming back and saying, I'm here. <laughs> you can't blind me no more. I'm here to do my mission. If there is something that is really cares about me that is greater than these gods, then let me know. Am I, is it worth it being here? You know, why am I still here? I don't want to be here kind of a thing. And so, so what yeah. do you think that was? Was it you? I think it was me coming, my, my real true self coming out. So your real true spirit came out of your body and was visible. That's what I feel. Okay, that's fine. I'm, I'm not doubting you. If you say it happened, that's fine. So you had a, uh, a ball of light 
come out of you, you believe it was you, and then you saw a shooting star or something drop. Yeah. Into the apartment. Outside. Outside. The apartment went, yeah, from my heart, it was in, in the, the well, it was actually a mobile home, yeah, in my room. And the next thing my friend said, why are you opening portals? Don't you know we have enough opened already? And I'm like, I ain't opening no portals. What are you talking about? Back then, I didn't know what the heck she was talking about. I'm like, I'm not opening no portals. <laughs> oh, then I had to move out. There was a big fight after that. But anyway. Um, so why, why did your roommates think you were opening a portal because a white light came out of you? How did they get from a white light coming out of you to there was a portal? I don't know, sir. I'm still trying to figure that out. I know that I can open portals and close portals in my astral, but um, you know we can go through wormholes. That's why the the military wants to keep an eye on us. Uh, they tag us, you know, if we want to go to the moon or Saturn, if we want to get so, out of here, <laughs> they tag us. <laughs> so the white light came out of you. How did you go? from the white light is out of you to outside. How did you get outside? We went outside because we heard at the same time that the light went out of me, there was a light in the window that I saw going and then, you know, exploding on the, on the ground outside. And I thought that was it an asteroid? There has to be a hole burning outside something. So we went all, we went all outside and even the neighbors and they're like, what the hell was that? I'm like, I don't know. Did you guys see it? Yeah. Did you hear it? Yeah. So, so how many, how many people were you living with at the time? Two. So there was three of you that went outside. Okay. And the neighbors came out, everybody came out and yeah. saw nothing. Nothing. So maybe something I was merging with something, my, my angel self or star self. You know, maybe I was like, finally, hey, I'm here. Like, I'm here to protect me and my bloodline. But I don't know. I think that's what it was. <laughs> All right, well, go on, to, go on to your next experience after that. So right after that, maybe about a week or two weeks later, I had this, right as I wake up, I have this guy coming out. He's like a Maitreya, okay? He has a turban on his head, a beard, a white robe, and he has holes you know, on his hands, he's coming out of a cave, there's light behind it, and then there's a triangle, and then he comes out, and he's like, showing me his hands, I'm like, what, because I've always asked myself, was I a master, because I always wanted to be a master, and it's like, we've already been masters, you know, later on, I find out, but this guy shows up, and I'm thinking, that's one of the Maitreyas, I don't know what, so what you he met, said. you met this being, mm -hmm. where were you when you met the being? In my room and on my bed. I would just like as soon as I woke, as soon as I open my eyes, I see that. What the heck is that? <laughs> so you saw it above you, in front of you. Where was right, it? And right, right, like in my in my eyes. In, in your mind's mind. eye. Yeah. As soon as I wake up, like you know how you're asleep and you wake up and you see things like that. So do you were you seeing it with your eyes or with your psychic vision? Psychic vision. Okay. Was it physical or was it not physical? To me, it was physical. How do you know it was physical? If it was just a vision in your in your mind? Well, it was a vision. That's pretty much what it is then. It, he was not in my room. It's just as I woke up, I saw it. So it must have been in my psychic, in my mind. Okay, when you, when you saw it, okay. That means you saw something psychically in your mind's eye, outside of you, but it, but it was not likely to be physical if it's right in your vision in front of your eyes above you unless was it okay i'm not going to characterize what you saw i can only get you to describe it was it uh three-dimensional two-dimensional was it large small describe it beyond give every detail re-experience it as if you're having if you're seeing it i was there it was i was there it was a cave i was i was outside of the cave this man's coming out of the cave i see a light a little light behind him a triangle and then he comes out showing me his hands and so you're dark. saying when you woke up you were instantly in a cave as i woke up that's what i saw you you were you woke up in a cave and saw a guy there who was uh, describing him again? 
later on I find he's the Maitreya. So um, he had a turban, a white turban, a beard. He had, you know, the curly black hair, a beard, um, the white robe. And then he extended his arms out to me, showing me that he had, uh, like Jesus, you know, the... the, the Sigma. Yeah, the, the hole in his two hands. So I'm like, all right, cool. This is weird. Um, but I'm not going to bow down to you either. You know, because these beings in the astral sometimes want you to bow down to them and worship them. I'm not going to do that. Um, maybe he was showing me that I went through a, maybe I was ready for my spiritual walk, you know, for my mission. I don't know. I don't so what, know did, you, what did you get from him? What what feeling did you get from this? He, was, uh, he showed me a loving feeling, you know, um, not not a bad person. He was like a teacher. He was like. Maybe he was my—he was teaching me something. And, and how long? Uh, how long did the vision last? Like not even a second. Like maybe a second. <laughs> oh, so it was just there and gone. Yeah. Okay, we'll go on to your next interesting experience. So the next one is in the form of a dream, but the same thing happened. Right as I wake up, I was given this bill. It was like um it was like a five dollar bill, okay? But it was not a five dollar bill. But let me back up. I'm flying. And I'm flying and I'm looking at all these highways. I've never seen these white highways before. Why are they not aligned? They is this a, is this a lucid dream? Yeah, lucid dream. Go ahead. So I'm flying and I go in there and then I land. I'm by my me and my body. I don't have a car, I don't have a spaceship, nothing. It's just me. And then I land there. And as soon as I land there, I see this white vehicle come, and then this light coming down in front of me. And there's these three beings. It could be Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. I don't know. I don't think so. But they look like it, okay? Like the man has like reddish hair, red beard. He's in a in jeans, jean jacket, jeans. The lady has short black hair, red lipstick, gothic makeup on, and all leather with a side, like a little side sleeve here, you know, shirt, leather leather pants, and then a little boy. The little boy is perfectly shaven. He's maybe about seven, eight years old. Blue eyes. His face is just beautiful. Um, he's wearing also denim shirt, uh, sorry, denim uh, jacket and denim pants, and okay, and some black shoes. So he gives me this bill. And the bill is, it has a five on the right top. Top right corner has a number five. Another number five on the left corner. Another number five on the right bottom. And another number five on the left bottom. And in the middle is a maroon planet. And on the right side of it, it has a star of David. And he gives it to me. And then I go, and I'm like, okay, thanks. And then I go under, underground. That's when I saw a lot of weird stuff. There was like these people stuck on these plexiglass um, windows, like asking for help. But at the same time, my mom shows up with my niece and she's like, hey, let's buy your niece some donuts. <laughs> like, and then I wake up. So I'm still trying to figure out what what are they trying to tell me? One of the guys was one of my uh, one of the people I talked to about this said that. I'm probably from Antares, from the Antares planet. Maybe that's what they were showing me. I don't know. A lot of weird stuff like that happens. It's my son. Your dog? Is that your dog? Veronica? Yes, it was. It's uh, my son. So your son has uh, your son has a dog, or you have a dog? I have a dog, and I have a son. So I probably have like another twenty more minutes. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so um, you've had so many experiences in your life. Uh, if you've got twenty minutes, go over the experiences that have the most meaning for you or the most or the any inter the the number of experiences you think 
you can fit into 20 minutes that are the, gonna make it, this 20 minutes, a very interesting 20 minutes. Okay, um, I'll talk about the haunted houses in Mexico and that I lived in and um, then Mar well, let me, I'll talk about Mars real quick. On Mars, I was on a mission. My name is Soel there, all in my black um, super soldier uniform. And we were rescuing children and females that were stuck in cages. And there were some reptoids there. I know it sounds crazy. It's not, I'm not, it, I'm not making this up. This is my part of my memory that came back. I did a regression. And uh, so you did a, you did a 20 year and back? Yeah, more than 20 years and back. I'm pretty sure it's 60. <laughs> I'm not sure how many, but I know uh, Peter the Insider from ACIO has confirmed um, what I've told him, and he's told me other things. Um, I was recently in Ukraine as well, in the astral. Um, but anyway, let's go back to Mars. So what what is happening is they have these children, and they have these other beings, as well as females, in these... Um, small cages there's some of them are bird cages some of them are kennels like animal kennels there's water flowing under uh one of the areas in mars and this is the dark side of the uh, when they say the dark side of the moon there's also like a dark side in, in mars okay and so there's running water and there's uh, these electricity um they're pretty much um electrocuting them and it's horrible it's but me and my my super soldier friends go in there and rescue them we did fight against the raptoids um they look kind of like dinosaurs but they have like the short arms and this being was also in my dream right before the incident happened in 2010 okay there was a, a one of those like a t-rex uh before the incident happened in, in 2010 that i just talked about a week prior to this, I am in a swimming pool with my children and my nephews and nieces in this dream form in the pool. And it's an indoor pool. And there is this T-Rex that comes. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing here? So I tell the kids, leave. You guys have to go, you know. And so the T-Rex goes and I'm trying to hide in the bathroom. And then he comes over and bites my hand. And at the same time, it goes into another dream where there's a bunch of spiders and spider webs on top of my own home in this vision. And then that happens. So it was like a warning. I was giving myself a warning, I think. Or maybe they were saying, hey, we're going to come get you. You know. So um, this was a dream you were having. Yes, very short dream. But those things happen. And what, I and, what makes you th and what makes you think it was more than a dream? I come from a line of psychics. My grandmother, my mother, we all get warnings in our dreams if something's going to happen. I also, I also had a vision in 2019, and I was not asleep. This was March of 2019, not asleep. I see this DNA black structure above my head, okay? And I say, this thing that's coming is false. They are going to put fear along with the, the DNA in the C-R-O-U-N, right? Because we don't want to say that word because you might get your video taken down. I've had t videos taken down of this plan thingy that's going on. And I told people, don't, um, don't get the, you know, don't fall for it. I also saw boots on the ground. This was in March 2019, meaning there was a bunch of um, military uh, in the U.S. And these people were in line. This is a vision. They were in line in, in the vehicle and giving a white piece of paper to the military. And uh, only those people were allowed to drive. Okay. And I've had visions and dreams of floods happening. Um, there was one occasion where my super soldier friends and I went and uh, we took some some kids and some people in a, uh, it looks like a bell as well, the ship. On the bottom, there was an auditorium. And then on the top, there's the command. And there's these screens. And so 
we were looking outside. I was looking outside the, um, we'll call it the spaceship, okay, Space Force. And I saw these people coming from, from the ocean, from California, from New York, from, you know, there was, they were coming out of the ocean, animals, children, men, and we were rescuing them. We put them on the ship and then we took them to Mexico to feed them. There was a bunch of food there, like tons and tons of food. The guys, some of the guys took over the, the men, helped them, you know, um, kind of like uh, a debriefing. I took the women and children with my group. Prior to landing in Mexico where we fed them, um, there's also a, a, cha a different chamber on the ship on the top to the right. As I was walking, there was this real, this man, it kind of reminded me of George Bush, but I don't know if it's him. But he was like in a gray form, like in an alien gray form with big glasses, short. And then he gave me a hug and he said, I'm sorry. And I'm like, wow. And so then there's Hillary Clinton, Obama in a catatonic stage. And they give me a, a red button to push and I push it and I send them away. Um, that's a vision that I've had since maybe 2017 that one i know something's coming um i tell a lot of people to be careful about the fake alien invasion because that's what they want they want one government one one world new order which i do not consent to they want us to go through the cern the cern portal for a new earth they want to use us that way and i do not consent to that they don't want to die okay they just want it to go to the new earth well i'm not going with them and i'm not going to help them what they want is to go and be like these particle beings to exist in another dimension. So look at that movie with Johnny Depp. And that's called Transcendence. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to go to the haunted houses and then we'll end. Uh, when I was as a child, my grandparents lived in many haunted houses. And I was told that my father was in a crib and there was a... Um, fire that came down, what was it called? A um, lightning that came in front of him. And he was illuminated. I don't know what it was. Still trying to figure that out. There was many, what they call ghosts. One time there was um, this little, this, it's like a little rock that would fall from the top of one of the houses, the, the rooftops. This was in Nogales, Arizona. And it would fall. And instead of the rock falling every night, just staying on the ground, it would go. It would pop. It would keep going and going and going. My, um, there was also some steps that we would hear on the bottom floor because there's like a two-story house. And it kept getting closer and closer. But when you open the door, there's no one there. <laughs> so, yeah. And talking about... Um, Lightning, my mother said that I was three years old and I stepped, it was raining one day, I stepped to go outside barefoot and there was a uh, lightning bolt that went right in front of me and I just stood there. So I don't know if I was taken or what happened. <laughs> what kind of superpowers, maybe I got my Thor hammer from there, I don't know. But um, that's pretty much it for now. We could do another recording later. Okay, let me stop the recording, hold on. Oh, thanks for being on the show. Oh, thanks, before Chris. we stop the recording, is there any, do you want to promote yourself in any way, shape, or form? Um, I, I make junk journals uh, by hand, uh, books. I uh, do readings. I do, um, I can tell you if you're in a program or not. Um, I interpret dreams. I'm on Instagram, Facebook. Just Google my name, Veronica Bartolini, and my YouTube channel is Code Breaker Real Talk. I have others that are that were hacked, but some.